The next program, To Collect, is about a cat and a monkey that collect diamonds. And the monkey moves in all four directions and shows a score. The cat only moves down. So I'm moving the monkey, collecting diamonds when they appear randomly. So the monkey works great. The cat will move down with S, you know, the old WASD keys, if you've got two players. Um, but it doesn't go the other ways. So what are we supposed to do? Let the cat move all four ways. Let's do that first. This is uh, quite a bit more complicated than the previous ones. The index.html is about the same, but there's some instructions here on the top. So that's, um, you see this paragraph tag. And there's a cat graphic, a diamond graphic, and a monkey graphic. And there's a, there are two different bell sounds. They're about a half step apart on the musical scale. And back to the code here, and I'm gonna hide this section on the left. Um, okay, so as before, we have a preload method, a create method, and an update method. And we also have some other methods that we added, add diamond and collect. This part at the bottom is um, a little bit new now because in addition to using the arcade physics, we're now setting uh, gravity. You see the diamonds fall. They fall according to that gravity value. In the preload, we need to load these three graphics, the cat, the monkey, and the diamond. So that's what this does. This is kind of a um, terse or short way of doing the same thing for the three different graphic files, the cat, monkey, the diamond. Split on space takes the string with these three names in it that are separated by spaces, and it turns it into an array. And then for each one of those, it calls load image and loads it from the file with the same name. Then we load the audio files and give them names small bell, small bell, higher. Now in create, we add the sprites for the cat and the monkey. The diamonds are different because they there's a whole group of them. So we add a physics group. And then we add an event with a delay of two seconds so that every two seconds we add a diamond. Some of my students like to reduce this to zero so the diamonds just appear really, really fast. And then they, they would spend the whole lesson if I let them just scooping up the vast quantities of diamonds. For some reason, that's very satisfying to many of my students. Then we add the sounds. We call the small bell the, the cat collect sound. And the, um, the, the small bell higher is the monkey collect sound. So when the monkey collects the sound, it should be the half tone higher. Then we say that um, we don't want the diamonds to, it doesn't work always as the, you would expect, but I don't want the diamonds to overlap. Um, and so that's the point of this collider. But I think what happens is when I randomly materialize them into a place where the other diamonds are, then they do um, share the same space. Then we create the cursor keys as before for moving the monkeys, left the monkey, left, right, up, and down. And then um, we create the S key for the cat. So this is a this is an important area for what we want to do. We also need to create the W, A, and the D keys. So let's do that here. So I'm going to copy, paste, 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 paste. And so we're going to have W, A, S, and D, W, A, S, and D. Okay, so that creates the keys. It, it creates the keys with add key, and then we save the keys into these um, instance variables, part of the object, part of the part of the game, uh, part of the scene, actually. Um, okay, then for both the cat and the monkey, we need to do this. We want to um, say that when the when e either of the players 
the cat or the monkey, overlaps with anything in the diamonds group, then we collect them by calling the collect method that's down below. And then this part makes um, the score, this numbers, this add text, that's for this. And we set the monkey score to zero, and then we call add diamond to add a diamond. Um, okay, so let's come back to some of this later, and let's just get on with making the cat move. What else do we need to do to make the cat move? Well, here's the code for making the monkey move. Here's the code for making the cat move. And I just think if we duplicate this um, and write the code for all the keys, so W, A, S, D, and uh, so W is for going up. So that should decrement Y. A is for going left, so that sets the X part of the cat, um, subtracts three from it. S goes down, so that adds three to Y. And D should go to the right, so that adds to X. So I think we've done that part. Let's run and see what we get. Okay, W, A, Okay, we have a problem. The A key, ah, I see, I see the problem. Do you see it? This cat set Y, oh, right. So I've not made the X's and Y's right here. W is supposed to go up, so that's Y. S is supposed to go up, so that, or down, so that's Y. A is supposed to go left, so that should be X. And D is right, so that also should be X. Let's try now. All right. Uh, S for down, W for up, D for right, and A for left. Okay, and the cat uh, got one, but it didn't make a sound. So that'll be one of the other challenges. Let's go back and look. So we've done that, let the cat move all four ways. That was, uh, that took a while, but I explained some of the code uh, in, the, in the process. Uh, number two, have the cat play its sound when it collects a diamond. Well, let's see what it is that makes the monkey play its sound when it collects a diamond. Here is collect. We have code in here that says if the player that collected the diamond is the monkey, then we add one to the monkey score and then we play the monkey collect sound. So I think we could do something like uh, like this. We just add an else. So if it's not the monkey, it's going to be the cat. So we add an else here, and then we can um, copy and modify these lines. And um, so this will be, actually, I'm going to leave this off for now because that's a different uh, exercise. But the key thing is we want to play the cat collect sound. Let's see if we've done it. Okay, S to move the cat down. Good. Great. I just want you to hear that the monkey sound is a little bit higher. Can you hear the difference? Okay, show the cat score. Well, how does the monkey show its score? Monkey four. So where is that happening? That's happening here. Monkey, monkey score. So now we need to, we need to do this. Um, we'll copy the line that adds to the monkey score when the monkey collects a diamond. And we'll change it to cat score. But I don't think this exists yet. So let's go up, let's find where we have monkey score. And that's here. And if we duplicate this line, we can make a cat score and set that to zero. All right, now down here, this is the place that puts the scores up here. Right now, it says monkey and then this thing, which turns into the monkey score. Uh, so if we want to show the, let's show the cat score first because it starts on the left. So we can duplicate 
what's in here, copy, paste, paste, and maybe put a comma between, change this side to cat, cat. So cat colon, whatever the cat score is, comma space, monkey colon, whatever the monkey score is. Let's see if that did it. Let's get the cat to get a diamond. Oh, here's one. Good. So the cat's got one, monkey has zero. Now monkey has one. How are we doing? That's done. The optional thing, I don't think I'll do, but that's you might like to try it. The idea is to have some kind of enemy sprite so that they don't just run around collecting, but they have to watch out for things. Okay, that completes the to collect exercise.